Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Many Tragic Pregnancies of Catherine of Aragon Today, Catherine of Aragon is considered a tragic victim of King Henry VIII. She did not lose her head inside the Tower of London like Anne Boleyn or Catherine Howard, but the way that the king treated his first wife was nothing short of disgusting. He and Anne would celebrate her death in a disgraceful spectacle, and ultimately Catherine's downfall was brought by the king's wandering eye and his determination for a male heir. Her split from the king forced Henry VIII to break from Rome and declare himself as the supreme head of the Church of England, and also turn his back on the Pope. But Henry forced his first wife out of the royal apartments, and then for the rest of her life practically held her as a prisoner of the crown, being housed in various royal households with restricted freedom. But Catherine of Aragon's story is centred around the fact she could not provide Henry VIII with his greatly wanted male heir and successor. It would be Jane Seymour, his third wife, who would provide the notorious Tudor king his heir, Edward VI. But Catherine did give birth to a daughter, the oldest child of King Henry VIII, a daughter called Mary, who would go on to become queen, being known as Bloody Mary I. But what is the story of Catherine's other pregnancies? Throughout the centuries, many historians have debated the number of pregnancies that Catherine of Aragon experienced. Some claim it was six, and some even consider that she may have fallen pregnant ten times. Catherine may not have known that she was pregnant until she had missed her period or missed several periods. Another giveaway of pregnancy was that the Tudor Queen may have felt a baby moving or kicking in her womb around four or five months pregnant, which was known as the quickening. Today, it's easy for a woman to find out if she's pregnant, and this can be determined in a matter of minutes from a few weeks onwards. But there was great pressure and hope on Catherine of Aragon to provide the future heirs for the Tudor dynasty for centuries, it was hoped. In medieval England, the English crown had only been held by men, and it was believed that women were physically and mentally inferior to men. Women were expected to be pure and chaste until they had a husband, when they would try and produce a child for her husband. It was especially desired for a son during the Tudor period. And if a woman could not provide a healthy child, it was considered her fault. Women were blamed for not giving birth to healthy children and sons, and in particular there must have been a huge pressure on Catherine of Aragon to give birth to a son. It was at the time her duty to do so, and to provide Henry VIII, her husband, with the heir to carry on the Tudor bloodline. But it's mostly believed that Catherine had six pregnancies, and only one of these would be considered successful, and only one child lived past infancy. The first pregnancy she had resulted in a child being born on the 31st of January 1510, shortly after she married Henry VIII. There was great hope for the first royal child and heir, but seven months into her pregnancy, Catherine gave birth to a stillborn daughter. On the 27th of May 1510, someone wrote to her father, King Ferdinand of Spain, that some days before was delivered of a daughter, that her child was stillborn and was considered to be a misfortune in England, has therefore not written sooner or permitted any other person to send the news of her confinement, begs him not to be angry with her, for it has been the will of God, she and the king her husband are cheerful, thank God and him that he has given her such a husband as King of England. But many were hopeful that the king and queen were young, and that their time would come. On January 1st, 1511, Catherine gave birth to a baby boy named Henry, after his father. Across England there were huge celebrations, Henry VIII had got what he wanted, a healthy son, and all across the lands bells tolled in churches for the new heir to the throne. A huge ceremony was held at Westminster with a celebratory joust to mark the heir's birth, but at the age of 52 days old, the young prince, Henry, tragically died, and with this the royal family were distraught. In the September of 1513, Catherine gave birth to another son, and a record stated that a male heir was born to the King of England and will inherit the crown, the other son having died. However, it's believed that this child was alive when born, but shortly after passed away. It's believed that Henry VIII was in France when Catherine was giving birth and was not due to return to England until the following month. 
but it's likely that the king would not have gone away when their child was likely to have been born, meaning that it's most probable that Catherine went into labour a while before her due date, possibly a few months early. In the November of 1514, Catherine gave birth to another son and it was said, the queen has been delivered of a stillborn male child of eight months to the very great grief of the whole court. By this time it's likely that Henry VIII would have been growing frustrated with his wife. But on the fifth attempt, Catherine gave birth to a daughter who was christened Mary. Mary became the Queen of England later, in 1553, and she became the first female monarch to rule England. However, Catherine of Aragon's final pregnancy, it's believed, took place on the 9th of November 1518. She gave birth to a stillborn daughter, and once again she had delivered a child around a month too early. But Catherine of Aragon, throughout her pregnancies, had delivered five children who tragically died. The amount of pregnancies and the tragic loss of them took a great toll on the Queen, and after November of 1518, she had no more children. It's not known why she lost so many of her children, but during the Tudor period, it was very dangerous to give birth for a mother and also a child. It was not unusual for children to die young, and it was reported that only 40% of all children lived into adulthood and were healthy. There were reports at the time that Henry VIII was infertile and incapable of creating a strong son, and these rumours plagued him and his mind. He may have been infertile in his final years, but this wasn't the case during his first marriage. One thing that may have affected Catherine's pregnancies was the fact she was known for being a devout Catholic and religious, and she fasted regularly, which could have prevented her children from getting the correct nutrition that they needed. But the story of Catherine of Aragon's lost children is incredibly sad and tragic, and it must have been very traumatic for her. She ultimately had a tragic end at the hands of her husband, Henry VIII, and his second wife, Anne Boleyn. She was cast aside and banished from court, and spent the last few years of her life prevented from speaking to her daughter Mary, as her husband the king forced them apart. Catherine and Mary would have been allowed to see and write to each other if they had accepted Anne Boleyn as the rightful queen, but both were too proud to accept this. Catherine of Aragon died a very lonely woman inside of Kimbolton Castle, and is remembered as the tragic first wife of King Henry VIII. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.